Welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Sony PRS-T2 along with the first generation Sony PRS-T1. Before we give you a software overview, ebook overview, and hardware overview, let's take a look at some of the system specs. These readers have a lot of similarities with each other. They are both 800 by 600 resolution e-ink pearl display. You look at um, battery life, the T2 actually has 30 hours, where the T1 only has 15 hours. The T1 actually holds more books at 1200 versus the T2 that only holds 1000. It's because of uh, the Android operating system and some of the new features that we'll show you in a bit that take up a little bit more room. Weight, the T2 is actually lighter. It clocks in at 5.63 ounces versus the T1 which is 5.75 and that's uh, the equivalent of 159 grams for the T2 versus 164 grams for the PRS T1. Now Peter here is going to give you a little bit of a hardware overview and let you know some of the differences between the two units. Alright so uh, starting with the T1 and we've all seen this before uh, you have just noticed right now that the shape of the housing is pretty much identical between the T1 and the T2. Uh, they completely took off this metal stainless steel brushed plaque and the similar uh, five piece buttons here and they actually mapped out, they almost keyed out each individual shape so you can tell that the house is shaped like a house and actually they're all raised so I think the buttons on the T2 look a lot better but uh, nevertheless let's take a look so you both have a piano white reflective uh, uh, bezel on here with the plastic. Let's flip over to the back and you see that both are pretty much the same. This is uh, slightly darker by it's it's not even really noticeable on camera it's more noticeable by the naked eye and it's not really worlds of difference um, differences. Uh, same certifications and everything on the bottom here. Uh, you have the same micro SD card slot on the side looking on the bottom what's missing you see that the audio is missing so you have reset button micro USB no audio on the T2 but audio on the T1 and the power button nothing on the sides and nothing on the top so you can tell main difference just in the housing alone are the buttons on the front and the lack of audio on the T2. I really like the button design over the T2 versus the T1. You could sort of see here and it, it's a little dark but with uh, the T1 there's sort of like these rectangular buttons that all run along with each other. There's a little bit of a groove in between here that separate it but I, I kind of don't like this design so I would have to probably give the actual button configuration to the T2, but the T1 has audio capabilities. So this means like audiobooks, music, MP3s, whereas the T2 does not have any of that at all. So that immediately those are the, the fundamental differences. Right now we're going to kind of evaluate some of the, the hardware or some of the software differences right now. And I'm going to give you an indication on what you can expect unit to unit. So looking at the screen right here on the T2 you actually see books here and these are from the Sony e-reader store. You sort of see the same sort of uh, carousel here without the buttons and these are books that are on your device or, or recently added. On the bottom here you actually see uh, four different menu settings. Books, reader store, collections, periodicals, where here it's very minimalist. You have your bookshelves, the reader store, and your applications. So the design of this is actually a little bit a little bit uh, simplistic. You can see that the design here is like really busy. There's a lot of options, right? And here it's pretty elegant. I kind of don't like the fact that these aren't your library books here, but you can also click here 
and make them recently added. So you do have two different options here, but by default, it's on reader store selection. So you can see these are the books that we've added recently, very much similar to that. And you can see they made better use. You see on this one, you only have kind of a one one row of three, whereas they've stacked them all together to maximize the amount of uh, uh, div um, books displayed on the front that is in your library. All right, so let's check out the bookshelves first. And these are kind of uh, the default views. You can see there's a lot of uh, similarities here. Both three per shelf. New books have the new flag. You have sort of like the same options here for, you know, grid view. Alphabetize. Yeah. A lot of options. Not, not much has changed uh, in this department here. So what are the main differences? Well, if you hit applications, we can kind of show you some of uh, the details here. So you could see here on the T1, you have Google Books. And this was the big hyping factor behind the T1 initially. If you click on it, though, um, you kind of get the message where, you know, it's unfortunate, but the reader store and the Sony PRS T1 does not support Google Books anymore. This is because Google Books became an integral part of Google Play. So um, the software was not able to tap into that ecosystem. So um, they both have public library access. So if you borrow digital books from Overdrive, you um, have the same type of uh, options on both models there. But you can see from the design, much more touchscreen friendly, big boxes, big pictures. Here, it's a little bit more condensed. You do notice the lack of the audio functionality on the T2, but you do have Facebook integration as well as Evernote set up so you can send things online to your device. You also have like pictures, text, memos, um, six different dictionaries here, your handwriting apps for the stylus that comes with both units. So pretty well Evernote, Facebook are the two big additions to the T1 or to the T2. You also have, and this is what I really like about the T2, is that under settings and in system management, you can actually check for updates and download firmware updates directly to the e-reader, whereas the T1 does not have that. You actually have to use the Sony for PC or Sony for Mac software or download the firmware updates online, hook it up to your computer via USB cable. It's a bit convoluted. This is much easier. You just click on updates, it installs them, reboots your uh, uh, e-reader, and you're pretty well good to go. Also demo mode. So if you were buying this to showcase like in a store or retail environment, it'll cycle through the various options and you actually don't see that on the T1. Now we're going to look at an ebook here, a Night Road by Kristen Hanna. It's the same book on each unit. You can see that the T2 obviously is a little bit more robust in loading up ebooks. Let's just check out page turn speed right off the bat. Say the T2 is a little bit faster. And you can also tell that the T1 has this little blackout every single page turn, whereas the T2, there's no such thing. It just turns the pages very, you know, every seventh page you might get one of those blackouts, but every single page you're doing a full refresh on the T1. And that's a big deal, especially if you tend to read fast, those flashing screens, um, it, it irks me, you know, it sort of takes me out of that book experience where I, I sort of fixate on that as opposed to uh, actually reading the book. Hitting the options here, you see more or less the same options here, navigate, notes, fonts, handwriting, customized view. Let's check out the font options. More or less the same. If you click on fonts, not much difference between the two. All right, so what else? You know, you have your notes. 
where you this is actually where your save notes and annotations are stored. We have some stored ones here. How exactly does uh, highlighting text and everything work? Pretty much same as all touchscreen e-readers. You just want to press and hold. And once you do this on either one, I will uh, show you there. You can then um, highlight, note, send to, or search. And it looks like on the T1 you have highlight, add note, search, and Wikipedia and Google show right up. So uh, a little bit different there. And you can also make paragraphs by extending the highlighted area. And then we can add a note. And we can just add a note by drawing. And when we reference that note, we can see a smiley face. So then what we showed you earlier when you go to notes, you'll see there's the note we made and there's the smiley face to remind me that's the part that I like. When you go to send to, you can actually send that to Facebook or, or uh, you know, you have options for that in Evernote where you don't have that option with the T1. I actually like the T1 with the Wikipedia and Google lookup. I don't know why they didn't implement those features in the T2 because a lot of people really like that. Um, sure you have your you know your six dictionaries and stuff but sometimes you want to look things up for Wikipedia to not only just find a definition but to actually reference it. Um, a famous person, a famous place, you know, to learn more about that. A lot of the options are pretty well the same, but as you can see, there's sub sublime differences between the two. If you click on more, this is where the T2 shines. You have a lot more options here. Settings, orientation, Facebook, page sync, search. The orientation will pretty well work on a software level, much like the Kindles do. They don't have built-in gyroscopes and accelerometers, but you can put it into uh, landscape mode and things like that. Also options, the post to Facebook. If you hit settings, not much there at all. It's kind of almost like a wasted feature. We're not going to show you the orientation because that's sort of like a given and stuff like that but you do have page sync which is cool but it is off okay so these are the ebook experiences as you can see it's pretty well the same the screens are the same e ink pearl resolutions the same uh, the housing's a bit different but fundamentally the page churning experience and, and reading ebooks is a lot more slicker on this device. It comes at the expense of Wikipedia and Google searching. Um, if that's not a big deal to you, the T2 is better for overall reading EPUBs as well as, you know, changing text on the fly and things like that. The first thing, uh, the second thing I want to show you is uh, PDF files. So we're going to look at the Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, kind of a complex uh, PDF layout. As you can see with the T1, whenever we click on things, you actually have different options like FB Reader, Cool Reader, and in a lot of cases, those options that you select will crash. So with this, we just clicked on it and it just opened. Here, it's like you had to jump through a few extra steps. So here is the same book, same page. Both support pinching and zooming. Both of them after you pinch and zoom, take a few seconds for it to resolute properly. That's even a real word. I know what you mean. <laughs> so what else can we do to augment the PDF experience? Sony e-readers are pretty good for being able to check uh, things like reflow and things like that, but we're going to try and find the sweet spot. So you know, options here. Let's uh, check out some of the PDF options that we have. All right, more or less the same options here. You could change, you know, darker, brighter, custom views, details. If it's a scan thing, sometimes you want to change the saturation. Same options here.
Oh, did something on the T1. Seemed to have, uh, T1 got there a little bit quicker, but it looks like when you do the two column split, it mainly just zoomed in for you, which you can fully adjust by pinching and zooming. A lot of reflow doesn't really work well these days with faster e-readers that can pinch and zoom. Before you didn't have that luxury, so to get to say that quadrant, you'd need to adjust the page view. Whereas now, you can just get to that quadrant via pinching and zooming, which a lot of tablets, e-readers, and phones have support. So. Yeah, I mean, reflow was more important when e-readers were not touch screen. And this was really prevalent in a lot of early model e-readers that had keyboards or they had uh, keys for the interface. So you, you don't see a lot of advanced sort of, uh, you know, features for page flows and refreshes and things like that these days. But if you do want to find sort of that sweet spot, it does sort of allow you to kind of at least attempt to like be able to find it properly. The final thing is we'll do this. And unfortunately, whenever you sort of do things like this, it always takes a little while to do. Some things obviously look a little bit better in landscape mode, but as you could see, there's really few options that we did to really uh, make everything zoomed page to page. And that's like the big thing. When you sort of um, configure your e-reader for like reflow and things like that, you really sort of want it to maintain whatever level that you zoom in from page to page with these sort of touchscreen e-readers that's not necessarily like the case you always sort of see these um whenever you turn a page it doesn't really maintain exactly what you did i think you want to go to orientation yeah we're, once you uh chose landscape it seemed to have locked us okay so these are more or less like the pdf experiences um page turns Obviously, they're they're swiping. But overall, it's it's fairly lackluster, right? <laughs> it's a huge refresh issues and things like that. We've definitely seen better PDF support with uh, different e-readers. But um, yeah, what more can you say? Home button. The third, last thing I want to do is check out like a newspaper so we could see how basically a newspaper could be affected by the same sort of things that we tested with like the Dungeons Master's Guide. As you can see, it's um, a little bit smoother with pinching and zooming. Things tend to come into play a little bit easier. We're kind of experiencing the same things as we go from PDF to newspapers and so forth. Um, a lot of the page customizations are going to fall under your pinching and zooming capabilities. Like Michael said, uh, a lot of the reflows were better back in the days where you had multiple columns and you didn't have the pinch and zooming capabilities, but now you can easily just go to where you want to go to read. Yeah, totally. So that that's pretty well like the theme of things, right? And back you are. Yeah. So... We've showed you ebooks. We've showed you complex PDF document with a lot of with a lot of images in the Dungeons Master Guide, and then we have here like a complex like newspaper and things like that. So we've basically showed you the entire reading experience. So uh, what else is different? Well, the proof is really like in the pudding. It just overall design enhancements. I really like uh, how uh, the T2 has really uh, stepped up its game in terms of making the user interface a little bit more elegant, a little bit more touchscreen friendly. It, stats wise and specs wise, these are almost the exact same units. The reason why the T2 is it, basically lighter is because it just doesn't have any audio functionality, but you can see that the pictures look the same 
Obviously, the T1 has audio functionality, but it doesn't have speakers, so you're totally headphone reliant. They both come with a stylus. Uh, when you buy the unit and this is how you interact with it but as you can see we're not locked into using it we've been interacting with the entire device you know with our hands with with no big deal at all so uh, in the end pros with the t2 you can do firmware updates right on the unit um, the reader store I think looks a little bit more developed as you can see here. I do like the button layout on the T2 more. As you can see the reader store loaded very quickly here. It's basically the same store that you would experience here. Anything that you purchase on your PC automatically synced to the T2. Um, I, I, I think overall I would probably recommend the T2 to anybody that has say the older Sony PRS 650s, 600 or earlier models. It's cheap, it's cheerful, if audio is not a big deal this is probably overall a better e-reader that provides a better e-reading experience. I would say so as well and uh, it is more social, you do have Evernote and Facebook uh, capabilities but um, yeah, I, I I pretty much have to go with Michael on this. I mean, other than the design, stainless steel's gone. Um, design aside, you lose audio capabilities with the T2. You have headphone support on the T1. Other than that, they're not too different. They both kind of have the same pinching and zooming. Um, aside from the blacking out refresh on the T1, they both can read books properly. They have the same store. They have the same... Uh, options for the most part it's just it, it's just an updated t1 it's not a new completely redesigned reader it is pretty much just an updated t1 yeah i mean there's there's definitely nothing innovative from these devices compared to each other it, it's small design aesthetics small software upgrades uh, there's definitely no revolution here and i think that sony because they're only releasing one model a year whereas in the past they used to release sometimes three or four different models a year you can really tell that the company is sort of going more in a tablet direction with mo a lot of new tablet devices coming out so this has been a comparison to Sony PRS T1, T2. If you have any thoughts or uh, verdicts of your own on which one you like better, please comment on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash goodereader. And uh, for all the latest news, previews, interviews, and uh, everything else, you can check out goodereader.com. And both of, the, uh, both of these devices are available at shoppyreaders.com. And for Goody Reader, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.